welcome to Grace. And all you people out there on Facebook, we hope you will come and visit us sometime as well as watch on Facebook. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us for our sin, all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Please stand as you're able. O oh Lord, open our lips. <clears throat> Glory to the Father, Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Know this, the Lord himself is God. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting. And his faithfulness endures from age to age. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, Hannah prayed and said, My heart exalts in the Lord. My strength is exalted in my God. My mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice in my victory. There is no holy one like the Lord, no one beside you. There is no rock like our God. Talk no more so very proudly. Let us not arrogance come from your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty are broken, but the feeble gird on strength. Those who are full have hired themselves out for bread, but those who are hungry are fat with spoil. The barren has borne seven, and she who has many children is forlorn. The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down to show the rich up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low, he also exalts. He raises up the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap. He makes them sit with princes and inherit a seat of honor. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and on them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his faithful ones, but the wicked shall be cut off in darkness. For not by might does he one prevail, the Lord. His adversaries shall be shattered. The Most High will thunder in heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to the king and exalt the power of his anointed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Please be seated to hear the word of God. A reading from the book of Samuel. On the day when Elkanah sacrificed, he would give portions to his wife Peninnah and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he gave a double portion because he loved her, though the Lord had closed her womb. 
her rival used to provoke her severely to irritate her because the Lord had closed her womb. So it went on year by year. As often as she went up to the house of the Lord, she used to provoke her. Therefore Hannah wept and would not eat. Her husband, Elkanah, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? Why is your heart sad? Am I not more to you than ten sons? After they had eaten and drunk at Shiloh, Hannah rose and presented herself before the Lord. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. She was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. She made this vow, O Lord of hosts, if only you will look on the mystery, misery of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant, but will give to your servant a male child, then I will set him before you as a Nazarite until the day of his death. He shall drink neither wine nor intoxicants, and no razor shall touch his head. As she continued praying before the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying silently, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, How long will you make a drunken spectacle of yourself? Put away your wine. But Hannah answered, No, my Lord, I am a woman deeply troubled. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have been pouring out my soul before the Lord. Do not regard your servant as a worthless woman, for I have been speaking out of my great anxiety and vexation all this time. Then Eli answered, Go in peace. The God of Israel grant the petition you have made to him. And she said, Let your servant find favor in your sight. Then the woman went to her quarters, ate and drank with her husband, and her countenance was sad no longer. They rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord. Then they went back to their house at Ramah. Elkanah knew his wife Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. In due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son. She named him Samuel, for she said, I have asked him of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts you are not thoughts. You are raised my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways in my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating. So is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father and to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Hebrews. Every priest stands day after day at his service, offering again and again the same sacrifices that can never take away sins. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God, and since then has been waiting until his enemies would be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering, he has perfected for all time those who are sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also testifies to us for after saying, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. He also adds, 
I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through the flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an e evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. We, we just did it, Joe. Well, what? You're each time for your homily. Oh, well, that's what I was getting ready to do. <laughs> okay. This is a modified version of Kathleen Wakefield's sermon 
from sermons at work from the Episcopal website. It was, uh, she delivered, did the sermon uh, about two years ago on approximately this day. We're winding down the church year. Next Sunday is the Feast of Christ the King, the last Sunday of our liturgical year. After that, we begin Advent. As is usual for this time of year, the readings have that end time or apocalyptic feel, or at least the feeling that there is a time of change approaching. I'm still watering outside plants every day and running the air conditioner, so I'm even I'm a little confused. It can be difficult for us to read these passages and try to figure out what they mean and how they apply to our own times. Many of you may have cut down your banana trees and elephant ears weeks ago in anticipation of approaching freeze that still hasn't occurred. Others may have had someone that selectively edited your notes to complain about still having to care for outside plants even though you're the one doing all the work. What's important to remember, however, is that Jesus had an innate ability to recognize when change is approaching. His words not only signaled that anticipation, his disciples highlighted it. They expected the end times would follow soon. They expected the kingdom would be forthcoming. They were not concerned about earthly things because there was no longer time to worry about or be distracted by those things because they were all about to be over. This wasn't unique to Christianity. There have always been periods when masses of people feared and speculated about the end of the world. In Jesus' time, the... Bleep, bleep, who edited this? Anyway, moving on. In Jesus' time, the quote on Romans subjugated the people of Israel <clears throat> and many other countries. When the Roman Empire fell, everyone expected the hordes of barbarian armies to sweep through the now. European and Asian continents. Wars, plagues, famines affected people throughout history. They worried if and how they would survive and perhaps most telling whether this was the will of God. This isn't any different now in our time. A time when many of us have memories of economic struggle, of epidemics and pandemics, of holocausts, the threat of nuclear war, the use of nuclear weapons, and how the threats continue to evolve and continue to become even more terrifying. When I was young, we did duck and cover drills under our desk in anticipation of an atomic bomb. My grandchildren grew up with a similar drill, but to avoid a more singular threat, school shooters. I'm sure they wondered, like I did, where's God in all this? It never gets easier, of course, for the followers of Jesus that end that we constantly fear, rarely if at all, comes in the way we expected or in the time when we expect it. So how do we interpret God's guidance in these situations? How do we interpret these passages from the Bible? The book of Revelation by John would be super helpful if we had the sound of horns announcing it. There certainly isn't a short supply of modern and historical figures that have tried to draw connections between John's revelation and other prophecies of end times to current times to try to establish that the time is now. But the problem with their prophecies is simple. It still hasn't happened yet. We can easily sympathize with those who look for hard and fast answers because it can feel like things are out of control, like things are awful, like there's no other resolution possible but the end of the world as we know it. Those feelings come from fear, from grief, over some realities that exist in our lives, in everyone's lives, that we all feel we can no longer go on when we lose something important to us, or even someone important to us. We feel stuck. We feel hopeless. We don't see a way out. and We don't see a way to fix this problem. I wish I had a magical explanation or solution for this, but I don't. All I can offer you is the same thing Jesus did. Hope and faith and love. No matter what may happen, Jesus promised that the faithful remnant will be saved. <clears throat> One of the sermons I read in preparing for today included a quote that resonated with me. Hope is a state of mind, not of the world. Hope in this deep and powerful sense is not the same joy that things are going well or willingness to invest in enterprises that are 
obviously heading for success, but rather an ability to work for something because it's good. We are called to work for something that is good, to work for the kingdom of God, to work for something greater than ourselves or our fears or despairs or our losses. That's when I believe God is relying on us most. Relying on us to overcome that moment, that grief, that overwhelming event, and to turn it into something greater than anyone could have imagined. When the loss of a loved one ends up strengthening a relationship with others, when an illness inspires you to strive harder for health, when a fear makes you express courage you never knew you had, that's faith, that's love, that's hope. Amen. Please join us in professing our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us uh, have the Lord's Prayer. The Lord, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heaven, I will be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Jesus is not temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Day by day, we bless you. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Lord, show us your love and mercy. In you, Lord, is our hope. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life, and to serve you as perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you, you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Almighty and everlasting God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear our prayers for this parish family. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, and restore the penitent. Grant us all things necessary for our common life and bring us all to be one of, of one heart and mind, especially if we go through our search process. Guide us to the priest that you want us to have through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, 
by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Bound together in Christ in the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us pray with one heart and mind to God our Father. We pray for peace from things that separate us from one another and for our salvation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We pray for the peace of the whole world and for the welfare of the holy churches of God, especially St. Andrew's Lawton, the Church of the Holy Trinity, Fray Bento Uruguay, the Diocese of the Dominican Republic, and the Diocese of Central Ecuador. We pray for this holy gathering and for those who enter with faith, reverence, and fear of God. Lord, have mercy. We pray for Sean, our presiding bishop, Paulson, our bishop, Tom, our clergy, Catherine and BJ, our wardens, vestry, delegates, all who minister in Christ, and for all the holy people of God, Lord, have mercy. We pray for the world and its leaders, our nation and its people. We pray for our leaders especially, Joe, our president, Donald, our president-elect, Kamala, our vice president, J.D., our vice president-elect, Josh, our congressman, James and Mark Wayne, our senators, Kevin, our governor, and Patrick, our mayor. Lord, have mercy. We pray for prisoners, for the oppressed, and all those in need or suffering, especially the Johnson family, Ronnie, Mike, John, Rose, Adriana, Fred, Stuart, Nancy, Thomas, Catherine, Jennifer, Paula, Kathy, Jason, Wesley, Geneva, Glenn, Jackie, Chad, Frankie, Taylor, Deborah, the Denoya family, Teresa, Philip, Roger, Patricia, Leslie, Anna, Pam, Jonathan, DG, and those impacted by war and violence, all emergency responders, United States military, and those whose suffering is known only to God. And we pray for those who have died, especially victims of war and violence and nature. Lord, have mercy. We pray for ourselves, our families, and those we love. And we pray for those in our parish, especially Bill, Anna, Lisa, Mark, Shelby, Charlotte, Anita, and Susan. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Stand. Let us greet together. Let us stand and uh, let us greet one another in the name of the Lord.
Okay, uh, today the loose offering goes to Meals on Wings. So yay, good, good, good deal. Um, the Scouts have been kind of taking a, a, a break. They had, they had uh, fall breaks, so they were, they were glad about that. They spent that uh, camping the whole time. And they're kind of taking a deep breath right now. But we did have, we have an Eagle candidate, Wyatt, and he came over yesterday. He spent, he and, and his crew spent yesterday afternoon in the community garden sprucing it up. And I have not been over this morning to see, but uh, he, that, that is his Eagle project is to, as, to adopt our community garden and to spruce and keep up with it which is wonderful, and he's a great young man, so he is going to be a, a credit to the Eagles. Um, what else? Uh, Lance Man, you're up. Well, good morning. Yep, like it or not, it's that time of year again. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't like it, maybe a little in between, right? So it's okay. So we are, again, gathering uh, for our community Christmas uh, program. Uh, we're still calling it, kind of calling it Jingle Jam as well. Mm -hmm. Our community Christmas Jingle Jam, we have a box back in the very back that we're going to collect toys. If you would rather give uh, funds to that, you can do that as well. See Ms. Nancy. Um, but yeah, if you like to get, if you like to go out and shop for the kids, you know that's a lot of fun for you. And you go out there and get something cool, bring it to the box um, out there in the back. And you see it's right there by Stevens back there. Hey, Stephen Wade, there you go. So anyway, also um, if you want to give to the uh, food fund for the Christmas program, um, we we're going to have a tree. We still going to have a tree. Right, are we still going to have a tree though? Okay, we'll just go ahead and just stick an envelope and put some money in it and say, hey, this is for the food part of giving uh, for the Christmas program that we're going to give out to people. All right, what's that? $50. Okay, and it is, uh, we're asking for $50 per family. Okay, anything else? You can, sponsor, you can sponsor a family or you can share a family. <laughs> Uh, you can tell I haven't got quite all the information yet. Next Sunday will be better. Thank you. Um, just kind of tagging on to that a little bit. Uh, we uh, had a goal to serve 100 families, which is we served a little over that last year. So that would be 100 um, toys. You don't have to wrap them because we set up Santa's little workshop in there and the parents get to go through and help them pick out their toys. And then the, each family also gets a $50 gift card. It is a food restricted gift card um, for Walmart so they can purchase their supplies for their Christmas dinner. Um, so uh, what he was saying on that is you, if you want to sponsor a family, it's $50. If you want to get together with someone else, be, however you want to do that, you don't have to have the whole $50 because they're um, it's just whatever you feel led on your heart to give. Um, and then um, we had our Faithful Innovation Group um, last year had um, done where they gave out ornaments and they had some conversations with some of our families who came um, that was really good for working towards making our ties to the community. So Ms. Pam asked me to show you this. This is a little basket that's gonna be back there by our box. And if you would also like to donate any Christmas ornaments, um, feel free to just deposit those in here on your way in. So we've got it all back there. You don't have to go anywhere else. You're coming here anyway, just bring it on in. And um, so the, uh, Jingle Jam is December 8th. It is a Sunday. It is at 5.30 p.m. So we'll have church, then we'll reset, and then we will have our outreach. Um, and then if you are wanting to donate money for ornaments, for food, for toys, anything to do with that, please put it in the offering plate and mark that's what it's for. Um, and that will get where it needs to go. Um, that being said, we're gonna back up a little bit because before Christmas we have Advent, right? 
Jingle Jam happens during Advent. But um, next Sunday is the last Sunday of Pentecost, Christ the King Sunday, as Joel mentioned in his, in his um, homily. The first Sunday in December starts Advent. Seems like it snuck up us, on us already. Um, during Advent on Wednesday nights, we have our family activities. Um, but we are doing our first Advent activity actually this Wednesday because of the way the Wednesdays fall during Advent. Um, we'll need to start them this, this, this week. So Wednesday, we will be making Advent calendars at 6.30 in the parish hall. Um, everyone is welcome. This is a family uh, activity, multi-generational, from the littles to the bigs and everything in between. Um, we just want you to come out and have a good time as we start preparing to move from this season into the next. Uh, just a, a note, I, I heard that if you're looking for gi for gifts for the children to, to bring for Jingle Jam, uh, I understand that Burlington and Ollie's both have enormous collections of really nice gifts, so you might check there. Okay. Um, just thank you, Joel, for leading the service today. Um, Father Kenneth Orsburn will be here next Sunday, so the Sunday before Thanksgiving. Um, the, our parish profile is uh, pretty much completed. It's on the website right now. Um, I am hoping to talk with Ken and Betsy this week so that we can move from the uh, forming a search to actively searching for a priest. So um, I've asked if, uh, several people to be on the search committee, and um, I'll ask the vestry's blessing on that before that's announced openly. So um, anyway, so there's a vestry meeting next Monday night, the Thanksgiving week, Monday. I think it's the 26th. All right. What date? 25th. OK. Um, anyway, so and there's an executive committee meeting today. So thank you. OK, and there's a potluck next Sunday. Turkey and, ham provided. Turkey and ham provided bring sides and desserts to go with that. So. It's our church Thanksgiving dinner. Our church Thanksgiving dinner potluck next Sunday. We'll have a priest, so please come. Welcome to our guest today. If you're new to Grace for the first time, or if even if you have been here once or twice before, please fill out a visitor card and put it in the plate. We promise not to harass you, but we would like to include you in our weekly email broadcast and other event notifications. Thank you for the blessing of your presence today. I think someone might be celebrating a birthday and an anniversary. Wow. Let us pray, O oh God, in our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant, Audrey, Pete, Britta, David, as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Happy Annie. Thank you. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday.
Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us. Grant us, us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.